getting real close to saying that I've seen enough, and I mean that in the best way possible. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. Pirates 7, Reds 0 last night at PNC Park. Paul Skeens pitched six innings, nine strikeouts, no runs, two hits. Just did what he usually does. His ERA right now is 2.16. That is the lowest in all of Major League Baseball since he arrived into the rotation back in mid-May. To say that he's checked every box is a gross understatement when you factor in starting in the All-Star game. And a lot of the other dramatics and theatrics that went along with all of that. But even in the more subtle sense, he's been so consistent with his performance, with his command, with his usage of his arsenal. Leaning on different pitches in different starts. Attacking hitters differently based on how they try to adapt to him. Every box along the way. And yeah, nobody's going to want to hear this because he's pretty much all the entertainment you've got left when it comes to watching this team. But we're getting close to that being enough. He's not quite there yet. He has pitched 131 and a third cumulative innings between the 104 in Pittsburgh, the 27 and a third in Indianapolis, that's already more than the 123 he put together for LSU last season. They tell you in pitch count school, if such a thing were to exist, that you don't ever want to see a pitcher, a starting pitcher, ramp up too much more than 20 year over year, meaning 20 innings. So if he was at 123 last year and he's at 131 now, you're probably looking at a couple more starts. And you know what? That would be just fine by me. Derek Shelton said before the game yesterday that the Pirates have no plan to shut him down. They don't have some sort of date. They claim to not have some sort of innings count. I, I don't buy that. I think that's something that they're keeping from the athlete but again we're talking about a really smart athlete here and it's not like he wouldn't be able to figure that out himself he's choosing to take the approach Skeens is of I'm just going to take the ball whenever and those guys can worry about that other stuff and that's a pretty healthy way for a starting pitcher a young starting pitcher to take that Jared Jones has done a lot of that himself where he's just like, listen, it's not even crossing my mind. Remember his attitude in New York after that ridiculous pull, the 59-pitch pull at City Field back in April? Same thing, same thing. These two guys are handling it all the same way, and good for them. But better for the Pirates if this extraordinary young man not only makes it through having excelled but also, he doesn't waste or risk anything over some of the most meaningless baseball that'll be played anywhere on the planet. This was Skeens afterward. Yeah, feel good. Um, and I think that's, um, you know, we've learned as, uh, as we've gone along. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm comfortable with the work that I put in over the offseason and at the beginning of the season and up to this point. Um, but feeling good. Tell you what I liked about this one. Th- this one... He got his velocity back up. I'm always a little bit leery whenever I see somebody's velocity get back up conveniently at a home game because you can adjust those guns a little bit, you know, the radar guns. But you could see it. You could see the effectiveness of the fastball, Uh, not just when it registered triple digits, which it did for him, by the way, for the first time in about a month and a half, but also... Just in the type of swings that it gets, the lateness of the swings, the awkwardness of the swings. So he did that. Whatever it was that was causing the slight 
and I'd insisted all through that meaningless drop in velocity, okay, another box was checked. He hit 100 in late August. He struck out a bunch of Cincinnati Reds in late August. Two more. Two more will do it. And the reason I say that is because if you go back to his spring training, and by the way, every single pitch that every single pitcher throws gets tracked, even, even out in their bullpens. So there's a number in play here that we couldn't even guess, meaning the one the Pirates have internally. So if you go back to the spring and you go back to all of those strange one-inning starts, he still had to get up, get revved up, get hot, go out there, blaze at 102, and then sit down after an inning. There's an impact there, too. And by the way, I, I always feel obligated to bring this up anytime the issue of pitch counts arises. This is a real thing. There's overwhelming medical evidence behind the value of taking care of the arm the way modern baseball people do. Sure, they still get hurt, but one of the many remarkable things about Skeens is that he doesn't have a life as a pitcher behind him. A lot of what does catch up to big league starters, in particular flamethrowers, is that all of the wear and tear from the time you're six years old and onward adds up. It doesn't for Skeens. Take care of that. Protect that. Ideally, there will be some significant baseball in his future. And yes, I meant in Pittsburgh. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's Gun Storage Check Week. Help prevent unwanted access to your firearms. No one wants their unsecured gun to be used in an accident, a suicide, or a crime. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to secure your firearms. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org. That's GunStorageCheck.org. Brought to you by NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. Today's J1Q comes from Jordan, who says, DK, what are the odds that if Andy Haynes gets fired, the replacement would be better? This is the same front office who thought Haynes was the right choice right after he'd been canned in Milwaukee. Jordan, one of the reasons that I will very rarely bring up an individual within a baseball structure, within a broader baseball structure, as needing to be fired or whatever, is that usually when they're hired, it's because their philosophy matches that of the person who's doing the hiring. This is what happened here. When Rick Eckstein was retained by Ben Charrington, that of course was the previous hitting coach, it was because, and I'm not guessing at this since they told me this, a group of players, Josh Bell, Adam Frazier, and a few others, got together and lobbied Charrington, their new GM, to keep Eckstein. They felt he'd made a significant difference in their approach, their mindset, their confidence, and their productivity. Charrington, to his credit, listened to his players for a while. Only a handful of months into the season, Charrington realized that he and Eckstein had nothing in common in terms of how they believe Hitting should be approached. Eckstein was actually fired before the end of the season. A mid-season firing. That's how egregious it was that they didn't see eye to eye. So from there, the end of the season comes along. The Brewers make Haynes their only firing from their staff because the Brewers had had a really bad season offensively and a really bad playoff 
against the Phillies. In swoops Charrington. The two of them are like brethren when it comes to, you know, all this taking pitches and running up the pitch count and all this stuff that we watch night after night and doesn't really get the Pirates anywhere. So, yes, yes, you have yourself a powerful point there. The instant that Haynes is fired, if that were to happen, not only would Charrington hire someone else in that spirit, I'm sure he's already got this individual staked out. I'm sure he already knows who it'd be. And that's why for a very long time now, when I've talked about the offense or the offensive approach, I haven't singled out Haynes. I've said Haynes, Derek Shelton, and Charrington. You can't leave Shelton out as much as he seems to enjoy leaving himself out of offensive conversations because I think he feels like he outgrew being a hitting coach now that he's a big league manager even though that's the polar opposite of the way Clint Hurdle used to handle it. Hurdle, when he didn't like what he was seeing from his hitters or his hitting coach, he would just step in and take over for a couple weeks and not apologize for it at all. He'd even tell us, the reporters, he'd say, hey, I'm the hitting coach for a couple weeks. I don't like this at all. I'm not going to watch this. Shelton instead just seems to kind of, you know, like with a lot of other things, go along with it. If you're going to make a change, this is what I'm saying, you got to change everybody. All of this is bad, so you got to change all of it. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates. We're going to be back with another one of these on Monday. 